Here we are in our example form 1040 populated with Lacert Tax Software. You don't need Tax Software to follow along, but it's a great tool to run scenarios with. You can also get access to the form 1040 related forms and schedules at the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov. Starting point, single filer, Mr. Anderson living in Beverly Hills, 90210. No W-2 income. Instead, we have the business income down below. Let's take a look at the flow throughs of the business income, which come from the schedule c profit or loss from a business and that is an income statement format income minus expenses the net income then in essence flowing from the schedule c to the schedule one and then it flows into the form 1040 the form 1040 there it is we know that they also have to deal with the self-employment tax which is our point of focus this time that flows from the schedule c net income then to the schedule se self-employment tax calculating social security and medicare equivalent in essence to the payroll tax for the sole proprietor at in this case 14129 which flows into the schedule two there it is here which flows into the form 1040 page number two and there's the 14129 we get half of that as a deduction on page one of the form 1040 we can see here just to note that flow through that goes from the schedule c of course once again the 100,000 flow into the schedule se calculate the self-employment tax uh social security and medicare half of that then 7065 in this case flows in to schedule one page number two which flows into the form 1040 and here we have it here so now we've got the 100,000 minus the 7,065 gives us the 92,935 AGI minus the standard deduction we're taking in this case is 12,950. We're letting the worksheet calculate the qualified business income deduction 15,997 uh, to get down to the 63,988 taxable income. Page two calculated the tax, federal income tax 9,009 or 692. The self-employment tax, 14129 for a total tax, 23821 30000 we are imagining we're, uh, uh, estimated tax payments gets us to 6179 We're going to mirror that over here on our Excel worksheet in a formula basis. So we've got the 100000 that's flowing in from Schedule C which is in essence just an income statement noting in practice you might do a whole nother worksheet for schedule c to look at uh, adjustments to income we have a whole nother course or section on that if you want to dive into like building a, a worksheet to help you do the data input but in essence we're gonna we got the net income that's flowing in here then we have the adjustments to income uh let's focus first down here the other taxes the other taxes we put in another sheet similar to what we would see on the tax return other credits and taxes where we have the i'm sorry other taxes here which is the 14 uh 129 that flows in here we also have the 7065 which is half of that which is coming from this sheet adjustment to income half the self-employment tax that gets us to the 92 uh, 936 the standard deduction 12 950 then we pulled in the qualified business income deduction calculated from the tax software to get the 63989 which should match the 63989 we saw over here and then we have the tax calculated from the software at 9692 9692 there's the 14 and there's the 30,000 that we made for estimated payments to get to the bottom line of 6179 so that's the outline all right so we're focused on the self-employment tax so you'll recall that if i go to the schedule c if i had employee welcome employees then i would be dealing with payroll taxes and if i had payroll taxes then i would have to deal with social security and medicare that i would have to withhold from my employees and I would also have to pay my portion of Social Security and Medicare based on their income and expense to me, payroll expense, right? I have to calculate my portion. In this case, however, we're talking about self-employment tax for a sole proprietorship. 
we don't in this case issue ourselves a schedule c because we're not a separate entity instead we're just going to take the net income in essence from the schedule c and then calculate the self-employment tax it's similar to a situation where we're an employee of another company in that we have to pay both the employer and employee side of it so so in other words if you were an employee and you made a hundred thousand versus if you made a hundred thousand on the schedule c you would be better off from a from a from a a taxes on social security and medicare to be an employee because you would only be withholding your portion half of the social security and medicare whereas here you're going to be treated as though you are both the employer and employee at least to the to for the most part paying for the most part like twice as much but remember that it's also still beneficial to be a sole proprietor sometimes because you might have expenses that you can write off that you can't write off if you're a w-2 employee and you have more flexibility and that and that kind of stuff too so that's the general idea so the net income then rolls into the schedule se so we can see it right here the 100,000, and then it multiplies at times as point uh, nine two three five for the standard method that we would use and so it, it's actually re recording the tax not on the full hundred percent but on the point nine two three five percent in essence and then we calculate down here the social security and and medicare portions on it that's how we get to that 14 129 which is the tax the 7000 then being half of that as the deduction let's try to mirror that over in our excel worksheet just so we can understand this calculation and possibly work on making an, an excel worksheet that you can kind of use to double check it and get a better understanding of it so i'm going to go back on over here i'm going to go back to my self-employment uh, worksheet and see if we can just put something together it's not going to be perfect but it can it could possibly help us to get an idea of the calculation so i'm going to put this i'm going to make this skinny over here and i'm going to do the self-employment tax self-employment tax and so boom let's do that let's make this black and white maybe black and white and then i'm going to pull in the self-employment income which oftentimes you would think would come from the schedule c so i'm gonna have to adjust this as i go here i'm just gonna kind of i'm gonna bring this in from the schedule c which is the hundred thousand that's gonna be our starting point and then you can see here it takes that one hundred thousand and basically multiplies it times the point uh, nine two three five so if line da da point nine two three five so i'm gonna do that i'm gonna say okay let's say times percent let's just say times times percent percent of what did i say i said i said uh 92.35 percent 0.9235 let's make that a percent by going to the home tab number percent to find it and there we go and then i'm going to underline it here and then we'll get self employ uh income subject to tax or something like that my subtotals may not be the best name but we're gonna say we got the 92 now it could get a little bit tricky because if i had a loss then we're not going to have any self-employment tax so i could say i might i might want to want to put a more tricky formula in here in the event of a loss but let's leave it at this for now and we'll get into that later and so then we've so we've got the 92 and then we've got the the maximum for the social security and medicare so notice that points point oh six two is usually what you pay for social security if it was a sole proprietor we're going to double that to the social security rate we pay here which is the 12.4 and then we double the 0.0145 to the 2.9 that's what i mean by we pay the salt both the employer and employee portion 